<laughs> yo, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up, man? It's your boy Jack Thriller. You tuned in live right now, not now, but right now. The new Jack Thriller City, man. Hey, y'all give it up for my DJ, the baddest DJ in the land. DJ Wiz, Red, let's go. Come on, man. And my uh, lovely co host, I call her Banner Black. BBL, to be exact. <laughs> Big Bad yeah, London. Crazy. We'll talk about it later. Hi, Jack. What's going on? <laughs> But guess who's back in the motherfucking house with the fitness for your motherfucking mouth? Mr. Two Weeks Out! What's happening? What's up, baby? Hey. What's happening, man? Buddy! What's good, y'all? What's up? good. Long time coming, man. Hey, listen, man, you heard me talking shit on the net and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm back in Atlanta now. So, you see, I'm over here putting, put, putting my foot down. Come on, man. I, I had to have you one of the first guests in here. Proud of that. D, D, D. And then, you know, I had uh, enough was enough mm -hmm. when I was uh, surfing the net, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, as I normally do, on even even when I'm not bored. And I see you over here training my homegirl, delicious and stuff. I'm like, in real life, though. In real life. In real life. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just told her, I said two times in two weeks. We on the road. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, man. And uh, the world is microscopic. Mm -hmm. Man, let's go ahead and break down y'all dynamic right now. Where did y'all even meet to be able to make this type of uh, situation happen? That's good shit. It's IG. IG. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, doing what I do. The the influencers and the, and the girls with the attention on them and stuff like that. I'm, hey, I got my services. I would love to be a trainer. Da, da, da. And, you know, she curved me about two years. Hey, about geez. two a good two years. Okay, no, he's telling the absolute two. truth, but it wasn't a good <laughs> Absolute truth. Yeah, yeah thank no, you. No, you always believe me, too. It was two years, yeah. but it's cool. Go you ahead. You know what, Speak Jack? Yeah. So I'll tell you, for two years, mm -hmm. it wasn't a curve. And I'm glad you brought that up because I huh? never got a chance okay. to actually explain that. Oh, really? I've always been. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't she know curved what, me, too, Mom. Let's hear, let's, let's hear it. No. <laughs> About being on this show. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that is so not true. strong. I am here, though. That's what matters. I know that's but right. No, with the trainer. Hey, she got that curve side service. Listen, that's what she does best. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been known for my curves. Yeah. But hey, not that type of curve. Okay. But listen, mm -hmm. I have always been intimidated by trainers. Mm. Because prior to like uh, the pandemic, I'll say, mm -hmm. my weight was all like genetically curvy. Uh. And so, but it wasn't what it should have been. Mm -hmm. It was just, that's how I was built. But I had cellulite. Mm -hmm. I thought that that was just natural. If you were black and you were thick, mm -hmm. then a woman had to have cellulite. I felt like you didn't have to be toned because that just, in my neighborhood on the east side of Detroit, if you was thick, you just was eating good and you was looking good and it was all good. But the I older that. I get, I realize that I need to be sexy, thick, curvy, but still healthy. Okay. So I started working out during the pandemic. And I saw an ass on me that I had never seen before. Well, whose ass? That's was how that works. It was. It was. It was your ass. ass. That's how it that was works. My ass, and it was. The, it was a new ass. Okay. That's how that works. And I admired that. Miss New Boo. Come on. Booty. I wanted to name myself Miss New Boo. Listen, the quickest way to see your ass for real is to shrink everything else around it. Yes. Oh wow. You get what I'm saying? Yep. I like what you just did. That right midsection. Yep. Listen, when that go in. The ass gonna be the ass. Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? It's gonna be there. If you happen to work out, because be a lot of women think that and they go and they get just the surgery just to shrink mm -hmm. the different areas. But if you actually go in there and put the work in in the gym, it starts to curve Come on, everything. Man. That's it a starts fact. to form everything. It starts to smooth it out. And then the cellulite goes away. Then I took the salt out of my diet because the more conscious I was mm. with training and actually having a regimen not just going and jumping on the treadmill mm -hmm. because that's like the go-to especially for women that's a fact yeah so i um i, I do seven start miles a day myself on the treadmill mm -hmm. he don't do seven but <laughs> don't do me that's like my don't nigga. he don't do he, seven he, he, doesn't do seven he don't do seven but that's my nigga yeah, he, yeah, he, he don't do seven you don't do seven, seven but 100 minutes a 100 minutes averaging at 3.5 for 100 minutes i'm not doing the math but In you ain't doing no seven miles you actually use your body jack and uh, b both of my mind and my body. You, you know on a treadmill mind. for a hundred minutes every yes, day? Yeah. Well, listen. Let me just say this because hey, I don't that, want... my stamina is off the motherfucking chain. Really? <laughs> really? Well, I'm sure ladies would love to hear. So we're gonna get into that. I got a bedroom body. That's we're gonna get. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> we're gonna get into that. Yeah. yeah. You and your body. We're what gonna is get into a bedroom it. Bedroom body. I need to know that. Tell tell about what a bedroom. Because yo, if anybody, we got the we got the the listen, body expert here. Let me say this. Bodies. Ain't no. By, Jason. Listen, bedroom body, all that. I got something else I want to say. So, hey, what's going on, man? It's your boy Jack Thriller, and guess what time it is? Blue chew, chicka 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 chicka. Blue chew. 
That's right, man. If you want to run a train, and what I'm telling you, it's like three of you on one person, but it's you. So it's all game, man. It's the, all, it's the right thing to do. You don't need nobody help. You, yourself, and I. That's right, Blue Chew. It changed my life. I used to be just like you. Soft as a gummy bear, but when I got that Blue Chew, boy, I was harder than Suge Knight in Las Vegas at a Mike Tyson fight. Do you hear me? And I was knocking them down, taking names and kicking ass. Yeah, bluechew.com. That's right, man. It has the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. And you know what I'm saying? We got our providers on hand to, to, to help you get this started right now. And you don't have to worry about nothing crazy like going to, standing in lines at the pharmacy uh, or uh, uh, long lines, period, or uh, just putting your whole business out there. It's a discreet plan, bluechew.com. And if you sign up right now, you can get that first month for free if you put in my promo code. That's right, bluechew.com slash thriller, bluechew.com slash thriller. And that's right, man, run that train, choo, 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 but it's just you. Cause you know, if you add some other folks in there, that's weird, but that's your business. You can do what you want to do. You get no judgment from me. Well, first of all, you, I commend you on your body because you've been putting in some work and that's what really made me be like, damn, what's she doing? She got, she got an obvious 30 pounds or whatever, 40, 50, yeah, it's 40 pounds. Yeah. So I saw that, you know, being a yeah. trainer, I'm just like, yo, now I'm thinking money at this point. Yes. I'm like, oh, let's put a program together. Let's yeah. teach girls how to, that's, I'm always thinking like that. Oh, it you know was what I mean? very so, lucrative too, by yeah, the way. Listen. Because people can, Mm, mm. It was, yeah, so you're right. It was very so, like I said, I saw that, and that's what made me really good. Just like, all right, look, quit fucking with me. Be at this gym. <laughs> let's go. And she had to, you know what I'm saying? She, and it was the best workout, honestly. So, good no workout. Bullshit. It was the best workout, workout. I've ever had. Ever, ever. And what makes yeah. it the best workout you ever had? You know what? He had when you sound I. sound like female Drake right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. Right. that. That's a compliment. But no, he had, when I told him what I wanted, he had the regimen already set up. So I basically was like, listen, I sent him a picture of somebody. Shout out to Virginia House. Mm -hmm. So gorgeous. Right. You probably follow her, Jack. But she has. The house in Virginia? No, her, I think her name is Virginia and her last yeah. name is Rose, but her, oh. her body is definitely built yeah. like a brick house. But as I started to get smaller, some of my male fans didn't like me losing mm -hmm. like that curve. Mm -hmm. But then I would see women that look like her who were much smaller than me, but they look thicker than me. Mm -hmm. So it was because that build out that's coming muscle. from that intentional, yeah, training for muscle. Mm -hmm. So when I sent him the picture, he definitely gave me that type of workout because I couldn't walk for about three days after. That's but I that's could see fact. the work already, and then I got back in. By the way, I stole all of the moves, even from the crib. That's good. Yes, that's I good. Used step up. That's good. All that of that. Perfect. That's good. But before you ask another question, because I want to talk to her <laughs> about this nigga body. Oh, his bedroom body. Before we even get to the bedroom body, you know how long you you know I just you know I mean how long I've been no. knowing him and all that. No, he hasn't. Listen, this nigga probably had the best body in. East Atlanta, hands down, at 19 years old. But well, what is that? What, what, what made it the best? Like, Jack, what were you doing? Like, what, what, I don't know what the hell he was doing. But listen, at 19, I think I'm probably a year older than him. But listen, this nigga arms was like this. Chest was like this. Waist like this. Like, Jack threw if you look at his arms, arms if you look a little bit, if you look, look, if you look at him a little really, bit, I you can see the frame. Listen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bullshit you. I don't play when it comes to bodies and weight loss, and so you know that's my brand. I can't even is that lie. Is that stripper days? Because you know he used to be a stripper. Oh, I know very well he used to be a stripper. Yes, he was Bob Wire. Dang, I want his name. You've been lying to me all this time. Okay, oh, about that. It wasn't that, Bob Wire. What was been... your, what was your name? I'm not gonna even ask you. What was his? Tell name? your name, cuz. Did he ever get $100 from a man, a strange man that came into the club? Mm. See, Jack tells me a long line of stories about his stripping days, and I really don't know if I can believe them. Shit was wild back then now. It was wild as fuck. Super he wild. Told me he was slapping women in the face with it. Yeah, he was. He was. So what was your name then, Jack? That nigga had the dumbest damn name. I'm going to let him say the name. But the name ended up working in the long run. Go ahead, cuz. It was Honey Buns. That was that nigga's name. Swear to God. 
Yeah. Your stripper name was Honey Buns? Yeah, it, I, I, it was a double entendre. Listen. If you, because. I don't even know the story. This. <laughs> Who called you by that name? Did any of your friends, your male friends, call you by that name? Yeah. That nigga name was Honey Bun. You called him it, that? it was, yo. I, I might have called him by his real name. That's called me. <laughs> but, yeah. Since the age of 14. Because your buns were so honey. I had a hot ass. I still got a hot ass now. <laughs> a lot of stem. Listen. Yeah, you, come on, don't, you ain't never looked at my ass. Tell the truth. Listen, let me just say this right here. Tell the truth. I, I be watching all ass. this nigga material. Are you talking to me or are you talking to him? Keep on. Keep <laughs> fucking. No, I was. Keep fucking. Definitely talking to you. Listen. Curious. All the interviews they be doing on my boy. I, nobody talks about past the radio and the this is 50 and all that shit, right? Mm -hmm. And this was my neighbor. Like we live in the same apartment complex. Like Three this friends. is my partner, partner for real. Like 17. come over to the house type shit. Okay. But um, this nigga really had a a, a, a very incredible physique. Really? Yeah, he told me he was fighting everybody this nigga, in school. This nigga physique was crazy. So I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna just put that on there just so it can be in the atmosphere, YouTube world or wherever the hell it's going. You put it my boy my boy wasn't nothing to fuck with. I promise you. Know you what? That. I see the sexy I on promise you. you that. I, I've always thought you were so hot, but now I'm seeing mm -hmm. Yeah, so when did you decide <laughs> to expand? I, I was I had um I got sick. Yeah, I got sick. <laughs> I got sick. That's what they that all part. say. Yeah. Okay, so got, what what really happened? How did you go from that body to that body? Um, this is a cool body too. Whether you want <laughs> that ain't the question. It. But what happened that to the hot body? That's Who wants a cold body? Ask you ever though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I got comfortable. Ah, there you go. That we, you see what I did right there? Nah, I see. And comfortable is a disease in within itself. It is. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. Nothing gets better in the comfort zone. No, nothing good come out of that you shit. You sound like a personal trainer. I'm just saying. Just <laughs> it let probably you know. was the honey buns. <laughs> I, and you know what? Yo, There's something believe in the name. It or not, believe it or not, mm -hmm. I wasn't even really eating sweets like that. Couldn't have been. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> it was, it was, a, I, I ate a lot of steaks and shrimp and lobster and shit like that. That's, that's my go to's, even to this today. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a savory guy. Right. <laughs> but, you know, you, you go on these dates and shit, you know, and that's uh -huh. how I started, like, raising my profile. I was like, man, what the fuck is I'm working out for? Mm. You know, nigga, I'm Jack Thriller. Mm. Yeah, I, man, nobody got to fucking work out when you fucking Jack Thriller. How is that's that a real thing. For you? That's a real thing, though. Amazing. Yeah. yeah it, it that's a real thing. See, but the problem is, when you get comfortable, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the, the quality, ah. the quality mm -hmm. changes. Changes, okay. you know, if it if it doesn't change with uh, the, the, the body styles, mm -hmm. it change with the with the, the making model. Ah, I like that. You, you like see what that. I did? Mm -hmm. You see what I, I did? I see where you're going. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you can get you can get a goddamn a brand new body put on a 1982. You damn so can. You Paint job on that motherfucker. Same computer. Yeah. You're right. In that bitch. Mm -hmm. You, you might still have some problems. It might be a little haywire because back in '82. You know, they had a couple of little defects. I'm understanding. Or years before. I'm following you. And if you ain't switching that computer out or rebooting mm -hmm. or upgrading. Or upgrading. He's, he's upgrading, on what they call that shit, or updating. Updating. He's on the program. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you could you could get caught into uh, um, some um, some cycles and your your situation might run a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. Right. Slower than the, 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 the average um, uh, 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 model. I get it. It's out right now. That, 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 I hope I answered that. You did. Not really. Can you, can, can you let my dog out? <laughs> Tell her what I was trying to say. Train lay for me. He said what he said. What did he say though? But it's not it's even for. It was for the, the people body. out there in, in the world. Uh, somebody didn't grasp somebody that shit. Somebody got it. Yeah. But you know what's so crazy? Yeah. Let me say this about y'all. Right, my my buddies and shit. I've never went on a podcast and said and didn't ask what the fuck we talking about. <laughs> like, I, I always be like, all right, nigga, don't ask me this shit. You know what I mean? I, I ain't never went on a podcast and so say, do you have what the fuck we talking about? Nah, it's just shit. Man, but tell us why you said that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Stay there. You over cutting the motherfucker. Sound like off. you got something. No, that's not what he's saying. No, no, no. no. What I'm right saying on. is this. What I'm Listen. saying is this. So, <laughs> most podcasts, most podcasts that I do, right? It be like financial literacy shit, mm -hmm. right? So, and I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I can literally go on a podcast and just talk about fitness shit. I can literally go on the podcast and talk about e-commerce. You know what I'm saying? So I just, but this, knowing my nigga, I'm like, he probably not going to ask me no bunch of nerd-ass questions. No. He probably not going to ask me no whole bunch of shit about the motherfucking 
metaverse and all this old shit. So no. I was just like, I ain't got to ask some shit because yeah. I kind of know we just going, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm just letting you know because I, you, you, you my niggas. So oh, we talk like, about you know every. And we, yeah, yeah, we be talking about bullshit anyway. Yeah, nigga, anyway. Did you see this nigga there to me? No. This nigga, I'm getting tagged like a motherfucker, right? I'm like, fuck everybody keep tagging me in this shit. In this parlay, uh, what apartments. is it? In the apartments of parlay. This you nigga. You don't know who parlay is. No. got a podcast for the franchise boys, you know what I'm oh, saying? Atlanta native, too. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, he got a podcast and shit. And I be catching this podcast. I be seeing it, the rap blogs, be reposting yeah, and shit. Too, yeah. This nigga goes on there. And you know he telling him his story and shit, his life story, how he got in the game, and this and a third. And the third, in one part of the story, he start talking about he was stripping and shit, right? And Parlay like, nigga, you was stripping? He like, nigga, I swear to God, I was stripping. You know, Mr. Two weeks out. Yeah, he was with me. I said, motherfucker, oh, why you gonna tell? So nigga, now everybody know. Oh, you, oh, you didn't know this was going. No. See, she didn't have a clue. You, 1977 model. 1978 yeah. to be exact. Know. But Listen. wait a minute, you, so you used to be a stripper too? I went in there watching this nigga. Oh, you didn't know that? That's oh, you thought like, I went in there watching this nigga. Yeah, okay, no, I yeah. was like, hey, I thought yeah. you don't know. I did yeah. not know. Oh, you don't know. No, what was your name then? Money over everything. <laughs> no. Moet. Oh, Moet, whatever. Moet. So money, money over everything. But you know what? <laughs> I like that though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, nigga. Why did I let you that? Oh, that was better than mine. Nah, yes, was. that was better yeah, than better you. Than your shit. something in the name. Yeah, you don't fuck with me. That's how yes, I you do. I do. You don't Yo, figure that out. I like Bob Wyatt better. Fuck with me. I like tell him what your catchphrase is. She always like, shit though. You, know, you should have been named Bob Wyatt. It wasn't Bob Wyatt though. Tell me this crazy story about him and Kevin Hart. I got so engulfed into the story just for somebody to say, you know, he's lying, right? Damn. Are you telling me the truth? He's a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. But he ain't lying about this shit with me on Okay, but Bob Wire, he had me excited. I go and recite that. You know Jack used to be Bob Wire. Right? Yeah, no. Some people I'm call me crazy. Bob Wire. Honey Bun. Yeah. And he ain't invest in his business neither. That yeah. nigga used to have rip, cut some shorts, draws in his ass. He wasn't, he wasn't, really, he wasn't really that professional, to be yet. honest. And, and see, you know and, and then too, um, to be this, honest. This is, this is a fun <laughs> fact. This is something you... <laughs> That he don't, he probably don't remember. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I mean, uh, Jason doesn't remember. Uh, <laughs> I think you gonna say what I think you gonna say. Yeah. No. Uh, you, you, uh, I had my hair blonde at the time. Mm -hmm. You had hair too. Yeah, I had. Yeah. But you know why I had my hair blonde? You ready for this? You ready for this? Mm -hmm. I was a big Cisco fan. Oh shit. I didn't know that. So that was the reason why you had dyed your hair blonde. I know That's that. why I had my hair blonde. Like to this day, you've Cisco, been a different nigga a long time, cuz. For a long <laughs> time. You've been a, a different nigga for a long time. I never told Cisco this. <laughs> He's the inspiration behind that shit. He inspired I, you. I don't really want to scare the nigga off because I don't want him to think I'm crazy or no shit. I didn't know that. But he probably think I'm crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I, would, I don't know. I, I mean, I would have thought you were crazy at Honey Buns. There's something in the name, Jack. <laughs> How did you get to that? Because I'm, I'm thinking if I was a You're stripper, smart. I would 20 years would later, name. red flag. Yes, I would be like, okay. Red how flag do I back come then, up? red flag now. <laughs> She's smart. Yes, like, how do you come up with a name if you're going to be a dancer? Honey like, what, what? how did you... Now, let me tell you how Honey Bun became famous in Atlanta. Do it. Okay. Do it. Help, help my... Help my help so, my let me tell you how Honey Bun became famous in Atlanta. Okay. And I was like, hearing this shit, I'm like, it, it, it's only one fucking Honey Bun. I know this ain't my nigga because I... This shit is retarded. But anyway, this nigga had the bright idea. Ryan Cameron, it was Ryan Cameron, right? It was Ryan Cameron. Ryan Cameron Morning Show. Mm -hmm. You know, Ryan Cameron, the biggest, the biggest dog, whatever. So this nigga calling up to the radio station every day, right? And you know, this is real time. This ain't Instagram. You got to call the radio station, right. win tickets, whatever the fuck. But you got to call, 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 call. You got to be a crazy motherfucker to just call, call, call and keep getting through. Right. Ryan Cameron having guests or whatever. He's like, we're going to go to the phone lines, da, da, da. Every time. This nigga gets through. <laughs> this honey bun, da, 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 he acting like a Did gay you have man. The hotline number? He's acting like a gay man named Honey Bun. And Honey Bun was so goddamn funny, it got to the point, I don't know if he gave him a job or how the fuck they worked that out, but this nigga ended up being damn near a character on the show. Who was gay? A goddamn kid named Honey Bun calling in. Popping shit. Uh, where did that come from? Did, what was Are that? Are you Something ready? That's yeah. Well, let me say this before you say that. Okay. That's some grind. You, that's some grind. That's some grind. Do it. Do it again. Bro, that nigga can't, That nigga got on the radio by just being a, a fucking dog. Honestly, it, he was being a gay nigga on the witch call, which is cool. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about even as that character, 
just to call and be that motherfucking in tune and just keep every goddamn day. Yeah, where did that come from? Like, how did you? Are you Niggas looking forward to Honey Bun on the goddamn. <laughs> Watch the full circle shit that make this shit, the show even make sense. Okay. The, the New Jack Thriller City, you know, story. Mm -hmm. Thriller shit. Okay. It used to be this joke by Cedric the Entertainer. Okay. I ain't gonna call no grown oh, man, man delicious. delicious. I thought it was the funniest shit yeah. in the world. And if I ever became a comedian, I wanted a name like Delicious. Damn. So I'm on this thing called the chat line. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the chat line is like That's what? how that shit started. That's how it started. I'm jumping and in them rooms. On them rooms. <laughs> me and my brother was going the holiday holes. Yeah. Okay, wait, what's the chat line? You know what I'm saying? Chat line? Yeah, no. Like black black what is shit called? Black, black planet? planet. Oh, I mean, I'm phone. familiar with black this people. This is like before, this like before never... social media and shit okay, like that. You, you used to just call. You're on like a phone line. Yeah. It. You know what it's like? What's that What's that new shit everybody be calling in? Celebrities be on it and shit too. Chat. Uh, Clubhouse? Clubhouse. Okay. Yeah. So it was like Clubhouse for the Where niggas in the 90s and in. shit. Yeah. So this nigga used to call in the room, just interrupt the whole fucking room saying some wild shit. <laughs> It's Honey Bun, da, 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 whatever the it fuck. It was a gay dude in there named Honey Bun. He said that. That's what honey it was. Bun, I hope your mama died by. And I, I bust out laughing every time I hear this nigga say that shit. And I was he like, if I ever become a comedian, took the nigga shit. I got to name myself <laughs> Honey Bun because it's like delicious. It make people uncomfortable, but you won't forget it. Okay, I can see the Did I ever call this nigga Honey Bun? Yes, plenty. I had to. Plenty. Every, every, I had to call this nigga no, Honeybun. I don't even know what other name I ever called him. At, at, at the end of the day, every knee had bowed and every tongue had confessed. <laughs> that you were Honeybun. That I was Honeybun. Nigga named okay. Honeybun. What, what you want me to do? I'm going to give you a round of applause, Honeybun. Hey, listen, what you want me to do? You lied to me and told me Bob Wire. It, it was never Bob Wire. That, I wasn't even going to get in y'all business. That nigga name was never no Bob Wire, though. You got to tell you he had a cute little tagline. Tell him what the tagline is. He's small, but he'll cut you. That's what Bob Wire <laughs> But, but, but um, once again, <laughs> that's what made insane. the show made um when I when I was looking for a co-host mm -hmm. when I was like, yo, I gotta get delicious on here. Cause that shit, like, you know, Full circle. Yeah, she, I I um I, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, with the with the whole honey bun the delicious thing, that's where it came from. It was something if you didn't understand that if, if you know the story, it was for me at the end of the day. Let me say this, bro. That was a smart move. She got one of the, my favorite pages on Instagram, right? And it's and, the same person. Listen, that little waist and all that shit, that shit is phenomenal. That's dope. But nigga, Derek, that character, <laughs> you, you you in tune with Derek? I, I'm totally in tune with And he's gay and he's 12. Man, Derek's so, so goddamn funny, bruh. Derek's so funny, the original person, shouts out to him, what's his name? Thank you, Jason Banks. Come Jason Banks, he got, Plenty of that shit, but I'm waiting for her shit to drop because it's just that much goddamn funnier. Thank you. And she is very, very, that shit is like my favorite goddamn person to see on Instagram. Thank you. Yo, that guy I ain't gonna lie. Depression. I love Derek. Man, Derek's so fucking funny. Yeah, like. If y'all don't know who Derek is, y'all need to go to her page and when she got the big ass head, it's up, nigga. <laughs> she gonna say some wild shit. And so, so you see, the character. When I was 14, I was Derek. Mm hmm. As anybody. Mm. That, if it makes sense to you. It makes sense mm -hmm. to me. You get it? Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full circle. I love it. Full goddamn circle. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. <sighs> Yo, you, you ready to get inside the driver's seat, uh, Delish? Yeah. Go for it. Ask some high stuff. Yes. I want to know how, first of all, that you get into working out. Well, your body looks great. And Thank now you. that I know that you were a dancer, then mm -hmm. you had to be in shape to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen people not be in shape, but in mm -hmm. most cases, if you want to be successful. But how did y'all end up stripping, like... What was that? That was the thing to do back then? So let me say, in Atlanta, right, this the era, we coming off the era of like, yeek and crank and the music was just like, the gangsters was on the dance floor and shit. We battling right. it, like, everybody like everybody danced. It was that section shit. Right. Sections was, they had sections in the club. I don't know who the fuck the sections was for back right. then. We weren't in them. So the, the, the sections was for the birthday cake. That shit. Yeah, what the fuck the section for? Yeah, you don't have Nobody your section, about a section. Gibson and the cake and everybody out here mm -hmm. sweating like a motherfucker. So we were some okay. dancing motherfuckers back then. In Atlanta, especially, you know what I'm saying? So we came from that dancing era and shit like that, and we came from that era of like, like, you know, freaking dancing sexy for the girls and shit. You know what I mean? So we really came from that. So me being from the cater, the way I started dancing, I had an uncle who was actually like top dog in Atlanta, right? Sweet D. So this nigga was part of a group called Primetime. 
and he was like the leader of prime time and shit. But I just always was like, you know, as a kid, as a boy, 13, 14, you just like looking at, you know, you're, you basically, you become, you can't become something that you haven't seen or, you know I mean? You can't really you just, to. yeah, if you haven't been exposed to certain shit, you can't really like fathom a dream that shit. And I ain't talking about no football, NBA shit. I'm talking about like right. niggas in your neighborhood. So he was the only motherfucker I knew with like BMWs and Benz and shit. I'm like, damn. And the girl's going crazy over this nigga. This nigga has everything I want to. Yeah, I'm like, shit. I'm like, this nigga got muscles. He got all the goddamn women. And this nigga got the Benzes and the money and shit. So I'm, it's a fucking no brainer for me. It's you know no what I'm saying? No brainer for me. So I already kind of geared my mind toward that shit. And I was a wild motherfucker anyway. So, you know, um, I took my. We actually went to the same club. So this is gonna, it's some wild shit. Pinups. Before pinups was pinups, these called be called guys and dolls. Okay. Guys was on one side, girls on the other side. The guys really was the attraction of the goddamn. The girls was on the little bitty side. The so niggas was on the big side. Yeah. So they didn't get as much attention as the guys. Fuck no, they was on that little side. We was on the big side, like okay. cranking it. And then you know they changed the pinups, and it was still guys, and you know it was still the same concept. But you know they ended up doing away with that shit. But we kind of went into that. We came, we kind of came in through that way, going in there and auditioning for that shit. They used to. It used to be like the club where all the girls had their birthday parties and right. all of those shit. And then, you know, it just led to other wild ass shit. But wow. that's kind of, yeah, So what led y'all out of it? How'd you get out of it? Out of it? You act like we was goddamn got sex trafficked. <laughs> no, guys normally get out. In my opinion, they get out of stripping just because they end up changing the pace, having babies, getting married. That's basically, yeah. Moving around. That's basically I, what it was. Women are known to retire in there sometimes. So I'm going to tell you something crazy. How I got out. I'm just a hustler. I've been a hustler my whole life, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm dancing and shit, and then we going to do parties. So we going to get booked for shows and shit like that, right? And we going to open up for the big dogs and like prime time and shit, the chocolate chip and deals and shit. Them niggas might book us for a hundred dollars and then pay the rest of the niggas two hundred dollars, whatever the fuck. We just open up for these niggas. And I used to be in that bitch like, it's five of us. They probably paid us a thousand dollars. It's a thousand women in here at ten dollars. I'm like, that's fucking $10,000. These niggas giving us one, keeping nine. You know what I mean? I'm doing the math on this shit. So I did a mail review. Mm -hmm. At 18 years old, me and my partner, Shannar, OG Shannar Johnson, rest in peace, we was, like, we was already throwing parties in high school and shit, but we just kind of put a little different twist on it. So we did like a mail review slash female review slash party, and we threw our first party, and I ain't fucking looked back. I'm like, shit, I'm the nigga at the door now. You know what I mean? Like, hell yeah, I'm paying these niggas. Like, shit, y'all niggas come dance and I got y'all, but I turned into a club promoter off of that shit. And then it led you into the body. So how'd you get into fitness and training? Man, this is my favorite portion of the show. It's your boy Jack Will, New Jack Will of City. Wiz, go and bring it down, baby. DJ Wiz. Yo, man, I don't know about you, Wiz, but I'm hungry, man. I said, I'm a hungry man. Bro, I'm, I'm a hungry jack. <laughs> so if, when I'm a hungry jack, man, I had to go ahead and get the best of the best in here, you know what I'm saying, to help my appetite out and whatnot. I got my man. Y'all yes, give it up for the one, the only, DJ Chef Chuck. Man, I like to call him, man. Yo, Chef Blue Chip, let's do it. What's going on? What's going on, How Jack? How you feeling, man? I'm great. No complaints. Life right. is good. I got to get on the road, but I can't ride. You leaving right after but, you leave here? Yeah, yeah. They go do a wedding. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, dog. No. Yeah. I respect that. I appreciate that. Hey, we giving you a round of applause for that. Hey, Wiz, man, drop that round of applause for him, bro. Okay, so let me tell you what I brought for what you did today. What bro? Uh, so I have some Tuscan salmon. Okay. Some teriyaki chicken. Okay. Teriyaki grilled chicken. Some sauteed green beans. Okay. Red skin mash. Stop lying. And this right here is my Ducey berry cheesecake. Hold on, do say. Do say, I do say. Do say me, baby. Okay, I, I need some of that. I do say, would you like? I, I would love it, as a matter okay. of fact. So what's something like that you invented before, like when it comes to food? What, like for instance, I, myself, I, I, I ain't no chef or nothing, <laughs> but what, something I like to do is, I like to get some chocolate, Hershey syrup, mm -hmm. put like a little spoonful of peanut butter on the Hershey syrup, on a piece of bread, white bread that is, I ball it up and then I eat it and whatnot, just like that. Okay. I made that. Well, I like to repurpose meals. Repurpose meals. I call it repurpose meals. What so you, you what is that 
that even mean? Well, that means you take those leftovers and you can make something else up out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I took macaroni and cheese and made a Belgian waffle out of it. What? Yeah. It looks... Ew. What are you talking about right now? No, so there's no there's no batter or anything. It the, the waffle itself is mac and cheese. Mm. And then you put your greens on top, your fried chicken, and whatever else you want to put on top. You really love cooking. Psh, listen. You really love making people happy. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Tastes like it too. Yeah, definitely. I do. Like well, we got to get some other people to taste it too. Yeah, you, know. you yeah, 100%. And, and, and that's what you're doing right here on a new Jack Driller City show, man, because there's a lot of people inside this city and whatnot. Right. And the 85 South Network and whatnot. So I really appreciate you coming to the show. Hey, no thing, problem, man. man. No problem. And, uh, yeah, we about to get up out of here, man. Uh, like I always say, yo, check this out, man. You just can't say you really something you got to be, man. We are when we out of here. It's Miss Chef Blue Chip. Do I have something in mind? Y'all go to commercial. Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth unless you got to. Pow. Yo, you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been going through this with him since New York. I I came in here giving him the business, but that's uh, I I fuck with him though, and he knew who to call though. He knew who to call. He knew who to call. You fucking that shit up. You made that. This is amazing. Yeah. I did this in an hour and a half, man. Hour and a half. So I got in the fit. So I played football and ran track and all that shit my whole life. You know collegiate athlete and all that shit. So I already had like a physique. And then dancing, I wanted to stay in shape. So I bought, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> stayed in shape. You know what I mean? It just always made sense for me to be in shape. Right. You know what I mean? But um, how I got into actual fitness, my girl, my wife, Shasta Halani, she had a... Uh, you fixed it, it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, you know when, you, when you thinking back then, you, you, your girl, whatever. But anyway, she... Um, she had our, she had our son, and she gained 50 pounds and couldn't lose the shit like she did with my daughter. So she so you know went and found this trainer and she trained her ass. So I'm like, what the fuck y'all doing in that gym? Why you like go every day? I ain't understanding the shit. Fuck. So I start going with her. So she ain't fucking, <laughs> hey, fucking with this nigga. Yeah, what's up? With this, what's up going on? You and this nigga. So I start going to the gym and I started liking the shit. So I started training, and I had a personal trainer for six years before I became a trainer. So I'm in that bitch working my jobs and whatever I'm doing, and I had a personal trainer, and my body got ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So it made the difference. Yeah, and I started doing bodybuilding competitions. She started doing bodybuilding competitions, so we turned into some bodybuilding motherfuckers. And um, yeah, that shit just happened like that. That's how I got into fitness. Now I'm curious. You having the lifestyle of being in the club and mm -hmm. stripping? How did you end up in a serious relationship? So I was in a serious relationship. So here's the thing. I've been knowing my wife since we were in seventh grade, like sixth grade, like really. Like as a girlfriend? No, nah, I've just been knowing her. Okay. So she's been know. I'm, I'm not a stranger to her. Right. She already know wild ass Jason, crazy ass Jason, like her homegirls. I used to date them and shit. So she already knew me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when we end up getting together, she really knew me. And um, yeah, I'm just like shit. I'm, she just got a wild ass nigga. She dating. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when we end up, you know, getting married and shit. Like the stripping and shit slowed down, you know. I just I obeyed, you know. Some of the shit she ain't want, you know. I stopped obeyed. doing. I obeyed, you know what I'm saying. Um, and it's just a bucking the system. You say obey, okay? Now it's a woman. I want to know right. What when you say obey? Why you say obey? I say obey because she like nigga. We can't do this, you know what I'm saying. You can't strip and be the type of nigga you need to be in this house. And you chose. Yeah. So I'm like, you right. Your shit. family. Yeah. That's dope. It was just a no-brainer, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I don't, I ain't, I'm an easy-going nigga, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that macho shit and all that, I be seeing my partners, they be having so, they be struggling so much in relationships and shit like that. I always tell this story about, I had one of my OGs from the job, <laughs> and he was at the house, and me and my wife, we barking and shit. Da -da 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 -da. And I know I'm right, but I got to let her know I'm right. You know what I'm saying? We barking, barking, barking. And he like, hey, bro, let me ask you a question, man. Come outside. He said, man, hey, man, if you... If you bitching with a bitch, what'd that make you? I said, bitch? So this nigga just called me a bitch in my own house. Like, nigga, you sound like a bitch right now. And I just, ever since that nigga said I sound like a bitch, I just could never fix myself to just, and I'm a fucking teenager. You know, I'm, I ain't even old enough to drink when I'm doing this shit. I'm a young nigga. I'm arguing with my bitch, you know what I mean? But 
that nigga said that shit, and out of everything, out of all the advice I got, that shit resonated with me like, damn, I'm bitching with, you know, I, I sound like a bitch. You know what I'm saying? And now I look at other niggas battling with their girl, them boys sound like bitches to me. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? I don't I, do it. Listen, them boys sound like bitches to me. And yes, you know, you. these niggas 30 years old doing that shit. Yeah. At least I was goddamn 19. So, what was your 20. remedy like to stop bitching? I just understood I had, you know, sometimes in relationships, it's we always try to figure out who's right, right? Right. We got to shift the narrative to find out what's right. Fuck who's right. right. What's right. You know what I'm saying? So, when yeah. you start changing your mindset on the issue, my wife is my fucking brother, my twin brother, my yeah. sister, my sibling, my mama, she's my fucking, whatever environment you go into with your sister. Not your you know, enemy. Yeah, whatever you and your sister got going on, nigga, you go to the playground and smoke with your, nigga, it's us. Right. So it's the same thing with your wife. You become one with your wife, just like you it's become one with, yeah, it's like, nigga, it's us against them. We fix the rest of the shit later on. But anyway, right. we got to figure out what's right and not who the fuck is right. You know what I mean? That's big. You feel me? Hey, bro, you just took it all the way home right there. <laughs> Nigga, oh, these niggas ran out of said. motherfucking drink. Cause I, 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 I'm, go, I'm just amazing that she had asked that question right there. Mm -hmm. Cause I always wanted to know that. Cause I ain't never seen you with nobody else but mm -hmm. her. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I know you since I'm like 17. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Tree Crescent, she was there too. Facts. And she, well, that was I, our I, first apartment to go. Wow. First apartment. You a couple years older than me, nigga. If you were 17, we was 19. Whatever. I'm you know 40. What I mean? I'm 41. So. I eat tea. You, you, you prettier than me, so you were lying about your age. <laughs> nigga, I'm a, you I'm just a year older than you, nigga. But yeah. yeah, we, um, yeah, man, we've been together for so goddamn long. It's just like, you know, even when the bad shit happens and things like that, you always just be like, all right, what's, is it worth it? You know what I mean? Like that type of shit. So even back then, I was just like, man, this shit ain't worth the headache. I get some money doing some other shit. I ain't gotta right. be taking all my goddamn clothes, throwing dick to. Mm. Make a living, you know mm. what I'm saying? I ain't have to. So. Times get hard, but you go back. I still not a move now. <laughs> I still not a move. So you get back in the Stripping place. was so I difficult. Still not a me. fucking move, was it? Why? Yeah, it, 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 Cause like I didn't understand the concept of dancing and being hard at the same time. Yeah, tie off, then man. Another thing. Yeah, can we can, I, off, can we teach him? It hurt my dick. Can we teach him? Can we teach him what tie it off, man? Yeah, yeah t teach him what tie it off, me. So. I'm giving up secrets. Now y'all gotta put this shit in something else. I anyway, so this is tied off. So y'all be like, how the fuck? How the? And that was my down. I was like, I can't never dance because my dick. How you gonna stay hard for an hour? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, how the fuck you gonna do that? You know what I'm saying? So but what y'all do? So what you do is, we, it's this thing called beef up. You get your dick hard by however you do it. Back then we ain't had no cell phones, so we had the little laptops or the magazines. That's where we had all them goddamn magazines. And you. Just Jack off. Yeah, get okay. your get your get your shit up, mm -hmm. and then we they had these things called cock rings. Like you get the rubber ones, you get the rubber cock ring, you put it at the base of your penis, and then you wrap it around one more time to hold the blood in your penis. Like cutting off your circulation. That's it. You get your get all the blood in your dick, and trap all the blood in your dick. And you put your shit on, and you goddamn beefed up till you take that shit off. Okay, so now what about health risks? Oh, I, I I pissed blood one night. Did in the you? Club and I was like, yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to be doing this. I Damn. You got to have a certain type of dick to do this. Yeah. So, so. Nobody ever talked to me about the blood coming out when you have, you, you have it tied up too long. I've been fortunate enough not to bleed no blood, but I will say I had a scare one time. So scared. I was beefed up so long. I was tied off so long that when I took that shit off, I had no feeling. I was like, oh, So you went numb. Shit. Mm -hmm. For a long ass time, for like an hour, I'm like, long time. what, <laughs> nigga? I was terrified, like yeah. stupid ass nigga. I done yeah. messed up my goddamn, but it came back and you know. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, that shit is shit is. Not, and another thing that I had a problem with too mm -hmm. is the the oiling of the back, and when you when you, you you're dancing. And you know it ain't nothing but dudes backstage. Hey boy, and shit. hey boy, get my back. Get my back <laughs> for me. And I, and then y'all like I threw the oil on the wall, and now this was on that motherfucker. <laughs> Making the goddamn get my back, dog. angel on the wall. Damn. Yeah, and I still was spotty. Bullshit. <laughs> some some spots was ashy, some spots wasn't. You gotta do what you gotta do, cuz. <laughs> yeah, stripping was just so difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in it for all the wrong reasons. Really. 
I just was stripping for the hoes. Damn. I was stripping for hoes. I, I can see that. For money at all. I can see that. <laughs> so I can see that. Get paid in phone numbers. I got paid in bitches. Mm, goddamn. <laughs> Everything else. Yeah. I give you a bitches over you money. That was my shit. P O M. Bitches over everything. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing in that motherfucker. Damn, huh? One night I slept with this old lady, look like Blanche from the Golden Girls. <laughs> and, and yo, let me tell you something. She paid me two hundred and fifty dollars for this. Came up. And, and I, I felt I, I, I just felt so bad, like. Like I had sold my soul, like you I did. Scrunched up. You did. Yeah. You sold it. Yeah, I did. I did. I you sold that motherfucker. I prostituted. I was ball up in the corner, singing, "Thank you for being a friend." <laughs> 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 nah, this fucked up, cause that was that was strike. Yeah, I wasn't selling no dick. That was right too. <laughs> so wait, oh I'm no, y'all no didn't dick. do no prostitution. He did. I was prostituting. I was there <laughs> prostituting the whole time. He like, sold a little dick. Pay me to do this shit. You know, sold no, one dick. Sell dick. no one's buying dick. <laughs> <laughs> no one's buying dick. Except oh, in the strip club. And it ain't the people that you think gonna buy dick. No. <laughs> Every <laughs> now and then, you will, you will get a delicious. Every now and then, you'll get somebody So like who's that. trying to buy it? Man, it's Blanche. Blanche. <laughs> Blanche will not buy that dick. And big girls. Yeah, all that little shit. Yeah, all the shit you don't want to do. They're buying it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was a very it's a very degrading thing to the point where I was just like, man, yeah, stripping ain't gonna be the shit. I think I need to go ahead and just go try to blow up, and that's where I'm gonna get my bitches from. Mm. Uh, but the last straw was one night I was in the club at pinups and guys and dogs. I was on stage. Um, mind you, I was a terrible stripper. I used to get butt naked on the first song. Nobody ain't even tipped me yet. Couldn't wait. Couldn't wait, man. I used to look. Yo, man, honey bun, stop that shit. Because if you get naked, I already cussed me out one night. We all got to get naked on the first song. You ain't even making them work for it. Damn. And then I had three of the longest songs in the world to dance to. What were they? D'Angelo, how does this it nigga feel? name the songs? Ain't that, that shit about six, seven minutes. <laughs> Don't stop till you get enough. Uh, That's five <laughs> minutes right there. Oh my god! That was your stripper song. Yeah, and then you, the last you, you one. Wait, no, stop that. You tell the you tell the motherfucking DJ what you want. So you obvious, this motherfucker. Michael Jackson. Yes, I was in there, goddamn ticking and shit. Keep on, think you don't stop. Naked. Don't stop. Butt ass naked. <laughs> butt ass naked with the cock ring on. How much money did you make off that song? The, the most money I, I think I made the most money I ever made was like forty seven dollars on Damn. that song right there. Cause I wasn't a good dancer. I never was a good. You saw me dancing yesterday with the boy. Bro, this shit is funny as fuck. Yeah, uh, so I, I just I wasn't good, and the last song I danced to was "Screw Up the Ground" by Splat Pack. <laughs> and one thing that was wrong with dancing to Splat Pack "Screw Up the Ground" is just such an upbeat song, and if your cardio ain't right, damn, <laughs> you running out of breath. You running out of breath. I, so you catch me in some parts of the song sitting down on the edge of the stage, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> And well, then I get back up and start dancing again. That's bad. Well, the ground. It's well, no then when they start rapping again, I sit down. Nigga won the best goddamn stripper. We ain't never said that. Never said that. So I had listen, the best body. You won the best stripper. You did I audition. I was hired. We had an audition with Lin uh, the white lady. What's her name? Linda, I think. Yeah, I think her name was Linda. We had a, a real. A white girl. Real cool ass yeah. white girl. She was like our manager. She was like yeah. really our pimp. So what did you have to do to audition? Go I fucking. I came in, I was butt naked and I danced to. Um, uh, what's you gotta that, dance what's for her. You gotta what's dance. Like come in there like Tuesday during the daytime yeah. type shit and go fucking audition. Noon. That type shit. Noon. Uh, uh, I danced to uh, uh, it was yeah. Um, this shit. Keep on till you don't stop. And she's like, you hired. That's this. We need your energy. Bitch was, was a like, hippie too. By the way, she was a fucking hippie. She was hiring anybody. Anybody. And you were in. I was in. How long did you stay, Jack? My nigga, are you gonna get naked? You cool with being naked? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I was too comfortable with being naked. And, um, so other than stripping, though, I when I look at you on Instagram, we I just see took how that you... stripping shit. For, I ain't never talked about stripping that long ever. No, I, was, I just didn't even know that was in your background. Yeah. And now I know that there's somebody that can tell me that he's telling the truth when nah. he says that he was a stripper. He definitely was stripper. Know, this is not Bob Wire. Can, it wasn't that. No, no, no. Can, can I, wait, wait, before he exaggerated before. with his story. It's but. a little exaggerated here and there. <laughs> but let, let me say this. It was people that called. Sometimes I wanted to be Bob Wire. 
Oh, I, I and missed I, that. I, I, some people called me Bob Wire. So it's not all cap. It just wasn't my uh, uh my 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 biggest. It was a, more of a nickname. Yeah. I'm gonna call you Bob Wire. I, like I don't mind. I, prefer. I don't mind. Whatever makes you comfortable. But I think you have a very successful past that obviously you're not, your oh, riches shit. are not coming from back in your stripping days. Absolutely Other not. Other than bodybuilding, what else are you into? Um, so, like I said, um, after doing the club promo and stuff, I got into trucking. And after I got into trucking, um, I got to a point where I did this shit for like 12 years and I invested into a gym. And I invested to the gym thinking I was going to be a gym owner because I was in the fitness and shit. And the gym wasn't doing shit. So I'm like, damn, I got to pipe this motherfucker up. So I put a nigga in my truck to drive my truck. And I was like, I'm going to be in the gym this week so I can try to liven this shit up. So I get in the gym. And I'm a club promoter, so I got a big-ass list. I got everybody. You know, people fucking with me in the city. So I had to just buckle down and do that shit. So I did that for about a week. You know, I'm trying to get people in the gym. And then the second week, the truck company called like hey man these niggas fucking up we need you in the truck the truck i'm making 20 you know uh two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred a, a week you know what i'm saying so i'm making decent money i'm making good money and then in the goddamn training i'm only making 500 a week right so i'm like i can't quit the trucks for the training you know what I, mean? I gotta go back to the truck and then i had a a fucking epiphany i just was like i could do this truck shit or I can do the shit that I can't wait to wake up in the morning to do. I couldn't wait to wake up and go kick them folks' ass in the gym. I could not wait. I'm up at night writing down what I'm gonna do the next day. I was just so excited about that shit. So I had to make a phone call. They're like, nigga, let us know what the fuck you gonna do. You know what I'm saying? And I literally picked passion over paycheck. I literally said, fuck them trucks. I think I'm a dope enough trainer to make it make the same amount of money here, I just need a little bit more time. But you know, again, like I said, it comes with having a partner. My wife, she a firefighter and shit. So I'm like, look, I didn't did the math. I, I had to present a fucking pre presentation to her. Like, <laughs> hey, listen, uh, the truck shit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna let that go. Making two thousand dollars a month here instead of two thousand dollars a week here. But these are the things we can keep. These are the things that gotta go. You know what I'm saying? And we can do it. You know what I mean? Just had faith in me. Just, you know, so I had to have that real conversation with her. You know what I mean? But one thing she knows from me just doing, I'm a street nigga too, so I done so dope Super and took street. shit. No, I done did a whole lot of, I, saw I ain't never did that, but I done did a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So my wife know if I got to goddamn go get it, get she it. always trust. She like, I walk in on give a fuck what happened. Uh, He's lying. He lying well, very, 19, much, very much so. Dog, but listen. nigga deserved it. He was bullying everybody. Listen, so she know that I don't fuck around when it comes to that paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga gonna figure it out. So I just like, just give me a little time. So I had a Mercedes S550. I couldn't wait to buy that motherfucker. Da, da, da. That shit had to go. You know what I'm saying? Rolexes. Just shit that I acquired. So these just material shit. Sacrifice. Yeah, so I had to sacrifice. But 2015 was, I always call that the year of the sacrifice for me. Right? 2015, year of the sacrifice. I had to get rid of some shit and I had to, you know, let shit go. And it's so funny because a lot of people are letting what the next motherfucker think hinder them from pursuing their dreams, right? Give them an example. I'm just like, and it's so funny because I just came over here, right? I just came, um, Kyrie, he got a barber shop around the corner. Uh, I don't know if you know Cut Creators, whatever. Mm -hmm. But Kyrie, a nigga who made six figures from cutting hair, million dollars, you know, I don't know if he made a million yet, but. He makes, I know, six figures cutting hair. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be a lot of people that, that's his gift. That might not be what he makes the most money at, but that's his gift. Steve Harvey said, no matter what you do in life, there's somebody doing the same shit you're doing, they making a million dollars doing it, why not you? Right. If you make lemonade, nigga, there's somebody with a fucking lemonade company that's in Kroger selling millions of dollars worth of lemonade. If you cut <laughs> hair, it's a nigga named Rick Bush went to Southwest Cab. This nigga got all the contracts in all the malls for barber shops, this nigga was in the penitentiary, learned how to cut hair, came home cutting hair, and got the contract. He's a millionaire from cutting fucking hair. So we think ten dollars a cut. You know what I'm saying? We think we only think what we can fucking see. You know what I'm saying? But it's like nigga, get in, get involved in it, and just remember whatever the fuck you're doing, somebody making a million dollars doing it. What was I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Like what was what would they need to have? Like because a lot of people that know how to train, mm -hmm, or at least mm -hmm. they think they know how to train, they don't see how that can actually you know, put them in a position to... So, 
And I teach financial literacy, right? So I teach niggas how to get money and things that I need to scale businesses. And one of the things that I understand is basic business principles apply to any business, meaning systems. The same systems you set up at the fucking fire department is the same systems my wife got set up in her body envy clothing line. The same system she got in her clothing line, same systems I got set up, you know, it's chain of command, it's this, that, and the third. You talk to this person, you talk to this person. Um, even as far as scaling businesses, me and my nigga circle of CEOs, we all got different businesses. I'm in fitness, one nigga do trucking, one nigga do credit, one nigga do leadership. But guess what? We got we all got the same cameraman, we all got the same ads team, wow. we all got the same fucking uh, PR people, we we all got the same people, but you gotta spend money to make money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers wanna hold on to their money and try to use their persona and their face Instagram followers and shit like that. That's your warm market, nigga. That shit gonna run out. Right. You have a launch, everybody gonna come fuck with you and buy that shit one time, nigga, and in 90 days you're gonna fizzle out. If you're lucky, a year, you're gonna fizzle out. What are you gonna do to get coat motherfuckers who don't know you to purchase your shit? You get what I'm saying? That's called your cold market. So your cold market, you gotta tap into that. How do you tap into that? You you pay for leads. You buy, you buy, it's like acquisition. You 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 pay for motherfuckers to come to your site and shit like that. So you ever you ever been looking up patio furniture on some shit and then you go on fucking Instagram, all it's you see is algorithm. goddamn patio furniture mm -hmm. every goddamn where. I'm patio furniture. You fuck around, look up some fitness on your phone you want to, my shit gonna pop up. You get what I'm saying? Because okay, I'm so spending you're money. For that position. I'm paying for and that. And you use the boost even on your um, social media? I use all that shit. Okay. I got an ass team. I don't fucking do nothing right. personally, but like I say, that's what that that's what that is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Google ads and all that shit. If you Google fucking fitness in this 10 block radius, nigga, you're going to get some of this. You're going to get me. you going to see me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, again, like I say, continuous education is something that we don't do in the black community, and I'm guilty of that shit. Right. I'm 40 fucking years old, and I just started learning three, three years ago, and you know, that shit just took my business and my life to a whole nother level. Continuous education, buying courses, going to these fucking masterminds, buying tickets to go to see Grant Cardone and goddamn Las Vegas, buying these thousand dollar tickets to this shit. I got a conference September 9th through the 11th. I want y'all to come too. But it's just, like I say, it's all financial literacy. Niggas is showing you how to get the bag. You just gotta be able to fucking, you know, you just gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta invest in yourself. Niggas always say, well, nigga, if you making so much money, why you selling it? Because if you don't pay, you don't pay attention, nigga. You know how many niggas I done gave my course to? I done gave my course to all my fucking cousins. The one nigga I told he had to pay for the shit, he the only nigga got an Airbnb. I got an Airbnb course. He the only nigga that got one, the nigga I made buy the shit. You get what I'm saying? It was important. He spent his money. Man, he spent his money. He had equity. He had skin in the game. He went and did his fucking thing. But a nigga you give something to, the value isn't there. What the fuck he, what, what did he spend and what kind of effort, or, he didn't put anything towards that. So he's not even gonna open the course. You know what I'm saying? I get you. I give away too much shit. You give away too much shit. I give away way too much shit, bro. Bundle that shit up. Okay. Yeah. Bundle that so. shit up. My, my course is called 4K Pathway to Success.com, right? 4KUniversity.com. How this shit came about, and I'm gonna shut the fuck up after that, let y'all ask me some questions. But how this shit came about, my partners, all them niggas teach people, right? And I got up through fitness. So I ain't, it wasn't nothing to teach niggas. You know what I'm saying? I teach women how to lose weight, but I don't teach people how to make money. And like, nigga, nothing more satisfying than to create. If you're a millionaire, create another one. If you're a boss, nigga, create another boss. You know what I'm saying? So them niggas talking to me like that. I'm like, damn, maybe I ain't the fucking boss I thought I was. Maybe I ain't the fucking tycoon I thought I was. Yeah, nigga, it's easy for one nigga to make it. Now go get five more niggas, you know what I'm saying? So once I adapted that mindset, I just put everything into this course, right? 4K University. And the reason why it's called 4K is because I teach people how to get into business with $4,000 or less, right? So we started off, it's two, three years, it's three years old now before they start doing all the Airbnb bullshit that they do in Atlanta. But Airbnb is basically renter's arbitrage, if y'all don't know. Um, renting out some shit and yeah. subleasing it to another motherfucker periodically like a hotel. Um, in Toro, I'm not sure if y'all understand how hard that's it is. Car. That's the car shit. Yeah. So you can rent whatever car you want. You know what I'm saying? I got a Mercedes. I put that bitch on there. It's Rolls Royce. This is everything on there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But again, like I said, I, told my, I, I call my shit 4K Pathway because we was teaching people to go get little Honda accents and shit like that. Go spend $4,000 on this car 
charge $45 a month, you know, $45 a day, and then you make $1,200 off that, for, you know what I mean? So you make your money back and shit like that, you know what I mean? Um, or you take that same $4,000, instead of cashing out on that $4,000 car, you take that motherfucker and you put $1,000 on four thousand four, four cars. Right. Leave that lot with four goddamn cars, you know what I'm saying? So it's just all type of shit, but everything we want in life is on the other side of what we do not know. You ain't gonna learn shit sitting in your comfort zone, like right. you were just saying. You ain't gonna learn shit just being the same nigga. I feel sorry for people who wake up 365 days and live the same fucking life over and over and over and over again. I don't give a fuck how much money you make. Yeah. That shit's boring. That's miserable. It's miserable. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas see these millionaires killing themselves and shit like that. Them niggas ain't happy. So money don't make happiness, but if you just continuously growing and learning and, and reaching new heights and setting new goals and shit like that, that's what life is about. In my opinion, That's I could true. be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Some some nigga to be happy with what I got right now, and just chill the fuck out. But me, I I feel happy learning new shit and teaching motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I got niggas under me that made a million dollars in fitness. You know what I'm saying? I got so many, I got so many moms that literally missed their kids' whole fucking football career. Couldn't make it to a game because they got to go to this goddamn second job and shit like that. We so accustomed to putting on work boots and a work badge to go work extra hours to make income. So I'm teaching motherfuckers not, you don't have to exchange time for money. Right. But if you spend a little money to learn how these niggas making money and they sleep, you be better off. You ain't gonna never get rich saving motherfucking money. I don't give a fuck who you is. You can get comfortable saving money, but you ain't gonna be no rich, wealthy motherfucker saving money. Yo, you know we've been conditioned to that. You know how our parents, Absolutely. Like, they always taught you, save your money. Absolutely. You know, they give you $2, save one. You know, so we were always... And there ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. But again, somebody got to be the nigga in the family to go learn from these motherfucking white folks. I study the fucking Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the fucking Kennedys. Right. I study family economics. Niggas always talking about, you can't do business with family. No, nigga, you can't do business with family. My whole fucking family worked for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'll fire their ass if I need to and hire another nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, fuck all that tradition shit that we done learned. My mama can't teach me about money. You know what I'm saying? I fuck you gonna teach me about, you can't, about this Yeah, you can't day. teach me about Understand this. It's 2022. We gotta start making money doing 2022 shit. Look at that part. We gotta start doing money in 2022 shit, right? So, listen to this. The largest hotel chain on the fucking planet, right? Airbnb don't own no fucking property. How the fuck they the biggest chain? They don't own no property. They don't have one piece of property on Airbnb. They can't take your property, charge your ass to put it on there, right. run the money through their fucking system, pay you, and take a cut. Basically for an app. Yeah, the largest fucking uh, any of this shit. Amazing. Think about these apps. The largest, look at the fucking taxi cabs. Last time you seen a taxi cab. The largest taxi cab company on the planet is Uber. They don't own one motherfucking car. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I'm not interested in that shit from the 70s, 80s, and 90s that my mama and them talking about. It's niggas that own fucking companies making a billion dollars and don't own a motherfucking thing. They own an application. They own a housing unit to where they can put this shit, draw niggas here from traffic from them systems and shit like that, and right. get some more niggas who are interested in that shit, and they middleman in the fuck out of things. You know what I'm saying? But again, the shit that we want and the things that we want in life are always going to be on the other side of what we do not know. Mm -hmm. What you don't fucking know, that's what's hindering you. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, go get some education. Go learn some shit. Go figure some shit out. I promise you. I got motherfuckers who ain't have a hustle in their bone, hustle bone in their body, take my course and tow their job, fire their boss. Like, nah, nigga, I'm getting my time back. I'm no, going to go do this shit. Right now. You know what I'm saying? So... Especially when you have social media. Absolutely. Because you can always use that for free advertisement. Absolutely. Like you said, when you start to be able to spend money, yep. you can boost that advertisement. But I'm curious, with all of that mm -hmm. information, what's Mr. Two Weeks Out? Okay. I'm just learning about Jason. Yeah, I know yeah, a yeah. lot of people okay, that's watching okay. are just learning about the name Jason. What is Mr. Two Weeks Out? So, like I told you, Mr. Two Weeks Out is bodybuilding terminology. It's like you're uh, two weeks out from a show. Normally, when you two weeks out, you on. Like, two weeks is when you determine, okay, you're going to go on stage or you ain't. Like, nigga, you ain't going to make it in two I weeks. I thought you was, you know like, starting to work out two weeks out no, of jail. No, no, no. That shit going to do with that. It's two weeks so out. So, to do with prison. absolutely not. But what, what happened was, I went to a bodybuilding seminar with my wife, and it's a nigga named Rope Man. He's like the, the, the lead judge. And he was talking. 
and someone was being rude in the crowd. And he was like, hey, you, shut up, man. Close your goddamn mouth. He's like, who you talking to? You know, he's being a, a cocky motherfucker. And he looked at me, and I guess he knew I came with my wife and shit. He was like, you, stand up. I'm like, he's like, yeah, stand up. I stood up. He's like, take your shirt off. I said, oh, no, I'm here with her. He said, I know, just take your shirt off. I took my shirt off. He said, man, this man, like, he two weeks out. And your ass got a show in two weeks. You don't look shit like him. You know what I'm saying? So he shitted on the man, but he said that. I was like, damn, two weeks out. I was like, that's my new name, Mr. Two Weeks Out. You know what I'm saying? So nigga told me I like I was two weeks out. I ran with the shit. It works. Bro, I thought you yeah. was like the weekend cousin or something. Everybody think it's some other shit. Okay. They ain't with his body building term. But like I say on Instagram, I got it on Instagram just for fitness shit. So all the fitness niggas was like, ooh, that ain't hard. They knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, that's dope. That is yep. So anything that people don't know about you that you want them to know? Um, I know you have something, so give us something that's real, like, juicy. Oh, something like that. Okay. Um, people see my Instagram, and they might see, like, a Rolls Royce and a goddamn happy wife, happy life, and mm -hmm. kids and the, I always see that. the yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Cosby bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it's absolutely <laughs> real, but, you know, I ain't... <laughs> That's absolutely real, but you know, prior to that, you know, niggas beginnings and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like my father is serving a life sentence in prison for murder. You know what I'm saying? My I brother, too, man. Uh, my daddy, club, my daddy's some, was some bullshit. But anyway, yeah. this nigga, um, so yeah, that and then like my brother last this year, 2022, this nigga got an aggravated assault, tempted murder on a, a nigga. He shot some niggas in the face. You know what I'm saying? So well, this I is the household. He, the case. he lying. Yeah, but go ahead. He lying. Oh. he lying again. I ain't none of that shit. But I'm just saying. So, you know, sometimes they say you're a, um, you're a product of the people you place in your presence, right? So naturally, my daddy a jack boy. He robbing drug dealers. My brother is a big drug dealer. I'm talking about paid in full, 16 years old, Audis and all type of shit. So the shit that I came up around and saw... We on Section 8. My mama, she trying her best. She working. My daddy ain't shit. You know, my brother. So I came up in that type of environment. You know what I mean? So for me to pick and choose what side I want to be on, you know what I'm saying? I could have been like my brother. Right. Shouts out to him. You know, ain't nothing. You know, he is what he is. What he is. Right. But my brother's a fucking stone cold gangster. You know what I'm saying? My daddy's a gangster. These niggas is who raised me. But at one point, my mom said, fuck this. I'm marrying this military nigga, moved me to Atlanta, and I had a whole nother perspective. I had a whole nother, you know, vision of how a woman should be treated by my stepfather. I had an opportunity to see the other side of the shit. So even, you know, it took a, a minute for that gangster shit to wear off, you know what I mean? Um, but I am my father's child. I am, my, I am that, but... So it's naturally in you. Yeah, but I'm also this. I also had an awesome representation of... A, a male, you know what I'm saying, and my stepfather, Donnie Charleston. So that's my nigga, and you know he just taught me a lot. So. Um, Got the go thrill, Jack thrill on these niggas. Got the go thrill, Jack thrill on these niggas. But yeah, that's 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 it. I come from very 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 humble beginnings. You know what I'm saying. Um, well, you wouldn't be able to tell because on IG, mm -hmm. I mean, whenever we see you, mm -hmm. you flexing mm -hmm. two different versions of that, whether it's the body or mm -hmm. you living good or whatever, and you looking healthy and happy. So it's. Yeah. It obviously worked out for you yeah. making a decision to do your thing based on what you wanted for yourself, not what you were brought up around. Most and, definitely. And, 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 and just to add on to what Delicious just said, too, mm -hmm. um, this is something I always wanted to ask you because, mm -hmm. you know, I've been in several different relationships throughout your relationship. Um, what keeps you and your wife together? Is it, how do y'all stay focused on each other? Last mm -hmm. question. Damn, how do we stay focused on each other? Um, we stay focused on each other because we got a goal. We got a, we got the, the same goal. You know what I'm saying? You ever see teammates, like if you see like those those TV shows, the sports shows, where them niggas hated each other, but them niggas was the best team because everybody had the same goal. Like, nigga, let's get this fucking Super Bowl. I can't stand this nigga. Like the Florida Gators, them niggas was killing each other and all type of shit. Right. But them niggas was a badass team. You know what I'm saying? So even though we wring each other's neck and we be at each other's throat and all the shit that y'all do with y'all spouses and shit like that, we done went through everything, high, hell and high water. But we always had a common goal that, you know, I didn't get married to be no fucking baby daddy. I ain't get married to raise my child. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying, right. I, I didn't 
get married before I was old enough to drink to be a fucking baby daddy or that type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that wasn't, that wasn't for me and that's not what she wanted. So we just did everything in our might and our power to keep our union. You know what I'm saying? Like the, I tell a nigga this right here, right? The, a woman's character is judged. Uh, you, you base a woman's character based off of um, how she treats a man when he don't have nothing, right? A man's character is judged based off of how he treats his women when he has everything, right? So on the flip side, when I ain't have shit, I ain't have a pot to piss in, that was my, my old lady. Now that I'm up, you see a lot of niggas get up and they leave the chick that they built with and shit like that. You know what I mean? So on the, it's, it works both ways. She could have left me when I was goddamn broke. I could have left her when I'm up. You know what I'm saying? But we got a common goal and we got love for each other and shit like that. So that ain't even a thought of mine, you know what I'm saying, to replace what I got going on. You know what I mean? So I just think though, some, of those, some of those key, uh, you know, um, integrity points are still intact with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really like my girl, you know what I'm saying? I really enjoy her company and shit. I know I said this, was, that was the last question, but this is right here. <laughs> you know, check this out. Like, does it get easier with the time yeah. or does it get harder? Yeah, it gets easier. It gets easier with the time. And it's so crazy because the shit be so up and down. I, I, can't, I ain't living no regular nigga life. Like I said, I was a fucking kid when I got married. So I can't say the, the five year mark is when the shit got better and shit like that. We was going Fuck, five years in, nigga, we 23, you know what I'm saying? So we still, you know, you yeah. still young as shit, you know what I'm saying? So, nigga, it took a long goddamn time, you know what I'm saying? But, hell yeah, right now, this shit's so simple, you know what I mean? Like, you would think that you'd be tired of this motherfucker and this and third, but nigga, we got shit we got to do. Our calendar booked the fuck up. We, That's everything, you know what I'm saying? We got so much shit planned and mapped out to do and things of that nature. So, nah, it, it, for us, it only got better with time, you know Man. what I'm saying? Last question, who you want to see on the couch with us next time? You know what? Who I want to see on the couch with y'all next Because you time? know everybody, man. Who can you, man, you, throw us the ball. <laughs> so let me say this. It's, it's, it's two two answers. All right. I'm going to say Lil Scrappy because that's my nigga, and I want to see y'all talk about <laughs> what we, you know, the old days and how we used to got there. So I, that ain't nothing. I'm going to call that nigga when I leave this motherfucker. We're going to sit his ass on the couch. You just let me know. I'll bring his ass up here myself. So... My dog, and then I want y'all to get uh, tap in with me, so I can put some niggas on this couch, so y'all can have a twofold with the financial literacy shit. You know what I'm saying? We need that. We need that. Yeah, for sure. And I want to get the superstars of your uh, of the Atlanta loft too. No, nah, for sure, for sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got all that. I got all that. But like I said, I just think it's more. It's, it's, it's so important for the financial literacy in our neighborhood. Like I said, I got tattoos on my neck. I look like a nigga that I am. You know what I mean? So I resonate. I go in a room and I talk. 90% of the room ain't giving a fuck what I'm saying, but it's 10% of the niggas that's like, I fuck with cuz, you know what I'm saying? Man. Them the niggas I'm talking to. Man. And I got other niggas like me, Wall Street Trapper, nigga did yes. 10 years in prison yes. for attempted murder, all that. Like, these yeah. is my niggas I'm with every day, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, but like I say, it's niggas that be like, damn, cuz came home for doing a decade, and now he a millionaire because he learned stocks in prison and shit like that. So it's just, yeah, it's man, I want to get some of them folks in here, you know what I'm saying? Funny. That'll be dope. Just, you know what I'm saying? We would love to there have there you there back there on the there couch. There there we go at yeah. every fight. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. But yeah, man, salute to y'all for what y'all doing. Thank you know you what I'm saying? Y'all ain't got to be doing this shit. Y'all niggas ain't got to be up doing it's a lot of shit y'all gonna be doing. You know what right. I'm saying? No, we gotta be doing this. But serving this information and you know, just even popping shit and getting giving the audience opportunity to see somebody they might resonate with, somebody they might be a fan of, right. somebody might day 26, whatever you just told me you, you know what I'm saying? Like Come on, man. Motherfuckers won't hear from these folks y'all put on these couches, so salute to y'all. Where salute can everybody find you online? I'm Mr. Two Weeks Out on Instagram. Um, my businesses are The Body MB, uh, 4K University, Circle of CEOs, Formula Conference, The Loft Athletic Club, okay, and Bosch University. Well. You know what I'm saying? So that's all the shit I got going on. Dig, dig. Hey, yeah. like I always say, you just can't say you're real. Some of you gotta be, man. Mr. Two Weeks Out, man. Atlanta Love, man. Circle of CEOs. We over and we out of here. Hey, do I have something in mind? Y'all go to commercial. <laughs> Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth unless you got to. Come I'll on. see you next time. Don't kiss Come them hoes in the mouth unless you Yo, got to. <laughs> Ah, don't kiss him all the love unless you ain't got to. Shit.